Alright, what's happening fellas? It's your boy Tom Jadobba, you home to the finest collection of plain black t-shirts. Today we're going for much more of a 2017 Tom Jadobba you video. We're going to be doing Things That Annoy Me Part 3. I guess having the odd Things That Annoy Me video is quite handy, because then in the future if I ever run out of ideas, I just know that Things That Annoy Me Part 47 will be on its way. Right, first thing that annoys me. What? You didn't eat all your food? You didn't eat every single crumb of food on your plate? Kids in Africa could have eaten that. I mean, people who say that do actually have a fair point. If you, um... You put your fingers in your ears and you imagine literally any other quote ever. Kids in Africa could not have eaten the food that's on my plate. It's on my plate in this house. The kids in Africa couldn't have eaten it. It's in this house. If I decide to not eat every single crumb on my plate, it's not going to magically transport itself to Africa and cure world hunger, is it? No, it's going to end up in the food bin. So please, just stop being so pretentious. Right, next thing that annoys me, this is something that a lot of Londoners will be able to relate to specifically. Sorry to the rest of the world, but um, you probably won't be able to relate to this. One. The toilets at Waterloo Station. You have to pay to use them. You have to pay to urinate. You have to spend money on one of the seven life processes. Yes, I listen in school. I mean, it's not much money, but you still have to get your coins out, then put it through the vending thing, then the gates open like it does when you get on the train, except on the other side of the gates, there's no train. There's just a bunch of cubicles and urinals. That is something that all humans should be allowed to do for free. I'm sorry for getting angry over petty things, but Jesus Christ, isn't it annoying when you're about to get on the train home from London, but you need the toilet, but the toilets at Waterloo cost money. I really do hope that there are at least a couple of people watching this video that have actually been to Waterloo Station. Otherwise, I've literally just wasted time ranting about something that no one knows what I'm talking about. Also to do with trains, here's another thing that annoys me. As someone who takes the train twice a day, five days a week to get to school, this is something that I have no choice but to encounter a lot. So a lot of the time, the train is very quiet. Empty seats everywhere, which is fine, that's good. However, on an average overground train, there are some rows of two seats, then there are some like kind of bays of four seats that like face each other. Now if I got on the train with three people I know, you might think that us sitting in one of those bays of four where all the seats face each other, would be perfect. And yes, it would be. But even when the train is dead quiet, there's always that one person by themselves taking up one of the bays of four. Like, no, you're by yourself. Go sit in a seat by yourself. Why are you taking up the prime spot for groups of four like us? If you're watching this and you've ever sat in a bay of four seats on a train by yourself, you really do need to rethink what you've done. Because it is so... So annoying. <laughs> right, annoying thing number four. This one gets to me. Th this, I take this one as a personal insult. You only do YouTube for the views. Oh, wow, really? You made that video? Oh, surely you only did that for the views. The only reason why you do YouTube is for the views. And, um, yes. That's the entire point of YouTube. Of course I do YouTube for the views. Of course I do YouTube so that other people can watch my videos. I'm not exactly gonna sit there uploading a video going, ho ho, I really hope no one sees this. Believe it or not, I'm uploading it publicly to YouTube. So obviously, I'm uploading it for the views. Now I know when a lot of people say, oh, you only do YouTube for the views, what they're trying to say is you only do it for the money. And for anyone who's doing it full time, yes, they are doing it for the money. It's a job. For me, it's not like that, because I get paid very minimal amounts for YouTube. So for me, my motivation behind doing YouTube is purely to try to get as many people to see what I'm doing as I can. So if you think about what I just said, then in other words, I do YouTube for the views. I don't think there's any YouTuber on this site who doesn't do YouTube for the views. There's going to be someone who's already taken this the wrong way, going, No, oh, you clearly don't care about your fans if you're only doing YouTube for the views. Okay, so first of all, I wouldn't really call the people who watch my videos fans. I find that like a really arrogant word. I prefer to call them viewers or even like the community or something, because that's much more inclusive in my opinion. But if you think about it, the word viewer and view are a little bit similar, aren't they? Maybe because the viewers are the views. So me doing YouTube for the views is doing YouTube for the viewers. If a YouTuber didn't do YouTube for the views, that would be them actively putting things on the internet that they don't want people to see. So if you're talking about your favourite YouTuber going, oh yeah, it's really nice because um, they don't do YouTube for the views, then I'm sorry, but I don't think you really understand what it means to do YouTube for the views. It doesn't even mean anything to do YouTube for the views. That just means doing YouTube because that's what YouTube is. Right, rant over. Actually, no, the rant's not over because I'm about to rant about something else. You're probably all loving the positivity today. Final thing that annoys me in today's video, we're going to be talking about people who say things like this. You do know it's all fake, right? Why do you enjoy that YouTuber? You know all his videos are fake. You know that TV show? Yeah, it's all fake. So stop enjoying it because it's all fake. Like, yeah, well done. 
A lot, a lot of media is fake. Does that mean it makes it any less entertaining though? I don't think it does. Well done. Like half of Britain's Got Talent auditions are staged. You can just tell when it's staged when like the judges say something to like a 10 year old kid on there and they come back with some really smart ass response. Obviously it's all scripted. But does that mean you can't enjoy Britain's Got Talent? Does that mean they should ban it because it's all fake? No, it's, it's an entertaining show. I don't see what's wrong with it. You know, it is perfectly okay to still enjoy things that are fake. Regarding Love Island, I don't watch it. It's not really for me. I just don't really see the appeal of it. I'm not one to judge because I haven't watched the show this series, but I'm pretty sure a lot of it is fake. But I'm not going to judge you if you watch Love Island. Like, watch it. That's great. That's fine. I don't, I don't care. I'm pretty sure a good half of it is completely staged and completely scripted, but that's fine. That's what TV is. Like, here's another example. Do you remember when the Sidemen diss track war was going on? It was an entertaining couple of weeks, but it was also very clear that the Sidemen didn't actually hate each other. It was very entertaining, but it was also very obviously fake. Well, unfortunately, that didn't stop all the angry haters typing away furiously because they thought that they were the only ones that noticed that the beef was fake. So you've got situations like that where people saying that things are fake is just blatantly stating the obvious. But then you've also got people who are just completely grasping at straws and coming up with conspiracy theories over things that really aren't worth it. Like, I know someone who is convinced that the KS Ivy Joella fight was staged. There is no way of convincing him that that was a real boxing match that actually took place. He thinks it was just a complete performance. The whole thing was 100% staged. Like, just bore off. I highly doubt it was staged. Those guys devoted their lives to boxing for like a couple of months. There's no way it would all be staged. That is such an anticlimax for what was a massive step for this platform. But even if it was, even if it actually was staged, it was an entertaining night. Like, if you think you're clever for coming up with conspiracy theories about things that were once really good and you're completely taking the fun out of it, then congratulations. You're pretentious. Some things really don't need to be said. Some things can just be enjoyed on their own without coming up with some big master plan behind it. So just enjoy stuff. Just enjoy it. <laughs> that is the end of today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below whether you agree with me on these things, whether you disagree with me on these things. I really would like to hear from you guys, see if I am the only one that thinks this way about things or whether I'm not alone. That would be great. Also, make sure to drop a like on the video and hit that big red subscribe button if you're new. It really, really does mean a lot. It is just a click of a button for you, but it is so, so much more to me, so please do subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya.